probably been one of the only few pictures in my presentation because we've had a bit of a technical hitch this morning. So, uh, so talk on images without any images. I thought that was quite quite original. So, um, we're going to try and whip through quite a lot in this session, and then we've got a lovely panel for you who are really experts on images as well. So, we'll be able to include some tips from them too. So. As a, because I like people being interactive, you might have noticed that the last few days. Um, how many of you take pictures? How many, keep your hands up, how many of you um, that take pictures would class yourself as photographers? Cool, that's quite a high percentage. Okay. And how many of that number um, would consider that they they are fully conversant with copyright and protecting their images. Okay. <laughs> images, as you know, we've all we've all heard it. Um, you know, a single picture can tell five thousand words. Tell thousand words, depending on the statistic that you're using at the time. Um, we don't often hear the right image can do far more. The wrong image can do an awful lot of damage. Um, I don't subscribe to the theory that um, any publicity is good, um, nor do I subscribe to the theory that um, it doesn't matter, stick up a picture, it doesn't matter who it is. I also do a lot of crisis management work. And if I had a penny um, for everybody who tells me that, but you know, we didn't know if that picture would be a problem, I'd be very rich. So hopefully by this presentation we have covered some of the tips that you need to think about when you're using images on the on the web. So as you all know, because you're all you know quite advanced WordPress users or uh, web people, images really boost online engagement. They make a real difference. They make a real difference to the bottom line as well. So if you are telling your your boss, if you're telling your project lead, or you're trying to sell your services to an organization. Actually quantifying how images and the need for a budget on images can make a difference is really important. And thinking about it and costing that up front. I deal work with clients who, who have this great idea of a campaign they don't have an image budget. When it comes to them delivering the project and actually getting a really good online engagement, it just all falls apart. Image, images can really help your content. And that's not just in people thinking, oh great, you know, I'll have a look at this picture and therefore ignoring the rest of your, your content. They can actually help drive all your content categories. There's, very, there's a lot of research being published over the last 10 years about the content that works for pictures and the ones that don't. Just as a, a quick show of hands, which do you think would be the more content rich for images um, category? Sports or news? So, sports? Sports. Sport. Sport. Okay. And news. Okay, it's actually a quick even split in the in the hands up. Um, it actually is sports. So we've all done it. We've gone to the back of a newspaper and seen the image on the back page of a newspaper of a, a sporting picture. Even people who have no idea about the offside rule, which I really still don't understand it before. So it's no different on the web. In fact, it's even greater. The right image can really make a huge difference. As we was on the PowerPoint, you know, we can increase traffic to e-commerce, we have calls to action, and we can make a difference for our brand awareness. How many of you can think of a single image right now that on a website that you have seen that sticks in your mind? Just, just one last night about the guy upside down kicking the football. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some sort of a bicycle kick or something. All right. 
really it's, it's really it's the sports for the, the, the photograph he's like in the air yeah. and he's upside down and the bottles on his foot. It's, it's, yeah. yeah. it's an amazing image. Cool. Sorry. Uh most for winning their first European championship. Okay. Any any others that are non sporty? What images that are the, that you've seen on the web on the web and you've thought that makes me remember it. <coughs> It was a great image yesterday of the two Korean leaders. Hoggy. It looked like a Bennett on that, but it was real. <laughs> <laughs> and end of the day, that is what um, major companies know. And if you're pitching to a major company or you are trying to work for their, for their marketing team or their branding, their campaign teams, actually being able to quantify that this will have a result an effect on how much their sales can be affected, how much their new e-commerce platform will actually be used, particularly when they're about to spend a huge amount of money on a platform that they haven't thought about having a picture budget for. And it happens time and time again. Campaigns, um, charities that have amazing, really amazing calls to action, but don't have an image to go with it. So they don't have a particular thing that will make people stop and think, actually, this is something that I need to do. And the blood transfusion um, unit did an amazing campaign last year, uh, encouraging people to, to give blood. And surprisingly, they didn't have a picture of someone with their arm out giving blood, because actually, that would have put people off. Mm. But the most obvious picture actually is just that. So when people were pitching and discussing this campaign and saying actually, you know, you could, you could do this, you could do that, it's actually looking at how effective is that image going to be. Equally, having a picture of a, of a model in a beautiful dress may sell a car, but it's not going to necessarily sell a product that you want to actually people to go and buy in a shop for hardware. So, so it's making it relevant, it's also not being cheesy, and it's not bringing your brand into disrepute. The, um, on average, total views on, on content increased by 94% if a published article contained a relevant photograph or infographic when compared to articles without an image in the same category. Do you all use infographics? Not that higher the percentage of the thought. Infographics are a really good way of you getting information out there. They're not that expensive these days to, to create. There's lots of templates out there that you can also use to check the advertising that goes with that. Because with the new GDPR regulations, there are things you need to be aware of. <clears throat> the um, unique images also make a difference in categories, particularly news. So, Colm's given an example today about the, about the news image that stuck in his mind. But one of the things that actually, if you're working on a news site or if you've got a blog, is not reusing an image that is going to be used in hundreds of other websites. Because actually, if that person who's used, coming to your site has seen that image so many times, they, and they really, it's just going to switch them off. There was a, a political campaign a couple of years ago in England where a, a particularly small um, party decided to use some images that were in a photo library, that they just, a free library, and they decided to use those. It had a knock on effect to the other people who were using those images because suddenly <coughs> they were being branded by a particular party. So again, if you do use free libraries, have a look. Where else are they being used? Because you suddenly could be saying a completely different thing about your brand. Search optimizing your images are really important. And the metadata that you use on that. Um, I, I hear a lot that people say, oh, we don't need to do that anymore because Google doesn't, doesn't care anymore. Well, actually, Google does care. And more importantly, so do the people who are reading your story. If you're doing a search for a, a particular piece of content, 
it may be that a search engine will find your amazing blog, your amazing new product, because they find the image. So don't just presume that an image is the thing that will actually help after everything else. It could be what actually drives people in the first place. The, um, the quality of a product image can be really important. Um, I probably see about 40 to 50 examples a day of images that are so poor for the brand that they're trying to advertise. And people just don't buy it. Trading standards are having a real issue at the moment where companies are putting up an image to reflect even a web service. And, and they're using that image to define and to actually value that product. So there was a company um, that's just been in the papers. Um, so if you search Google for, for this, I'm going to be naming the company in the presentation. That used a whole lot of images, um, really, really nice pictures, unrelated to their product, but they look better than their product. People bought this product on the basis of these pictures. They didn't have a disclaimer anywhere that said, actually, don't. Don't, these pictures don't reflect what you might be buying. So people quite rightly thought, this is what I'm buying. This is great. It's the equivalent of buying a, you know, thinking of buying a Ferrari and, and, and ending up with the Ford Galaxy. No offense to either cars intended. Um, so be really, really clear about what you're, you are saying about, particularly with e-commerce, because you could be forming a contract with the person buying your product or your service based on the image that you are choosing. And it does entitle people to refund claims, or at least they can wrap your firm up, especially for more firms, in a lot of red tape while you actually unpick it. Knowing your audience and being sensitive to photo choices and legislation in the country. I have a, a client who's just started working in parts of Asia and she's got lots of pictures on her site of people just sitting, relaxed. She has she um, sells trainers, it's really lovely trainers. Most of her pictures are with people sat, as most people in this room are. So they've got their foot up. But in a lot of a lot of Asian countries, that would be really offensive. And because that's where she wants to sell to, as well, she needs to think about the images that she uses. And she doesn't want to create a site that would have to be changed for different countries. So trying to get something that will work everywhere as much as possible. Having a mix of genders also makes a difference. If you're trying to sell a, pic sell a, a, a product or a service and the only pictures on your site are of male he, he stock photos and you haven't got a woman in those pictures, quite rightly your customer's going to think, well, that product's not for me. So every image should tell, a, should tell a story. So if it's not telling a story, quite frankly, why is it there? But also, it needs to be delivering what your key images, look so your key messages for your brand actually are. The, um, the, we were talking about this yesterday with um, WordCamp. WordCamp has a big W, so people know that's something to do with WordPress. If it has something completely unrelated, like a shoe, you wouldn't necessarily think that had to do with, with, your, with your brand. And you have to use every opportunity. You, it's a competitive marketplace to reinforce your brand and to help people find you, remember you, come back to you, and stick with you. Speed of load is really important. And I talk to um, lots of web people on a regular basis where they hit their head against the wall because they're working with a, a firm, an uh, organization, where they're getting content, they're getting images, but the images are not fit for purpose. And they'll have beautiful websites. They hand them over to their client. Within two days, the website's broke. Most times, it's only broke because they've uploaded two gig video onto the home page 
and they wonder why the web page won't, won't load and the home page won't load. Now, a lot of hosts will allow you to do that. Some hosts are a bit more responsible and won't let you do that. Um, and, and that's to be commended. Um, also, some hosts will, will have systems where you can have a quicker load for certain pages. So all these things are it's worth looking at when you're picking a host and when you're looking at what pictures to use. It isn't hard to reduce the size of a web picture these days. But if you are handing over a website to a client, get it in writing that as part of your service level agreement, a part of your handover document, somewhere that says, this is what the recommended size of the pictures should be. And that if they upload larger pictures or pictures that are not copyright free, that you will not have any liability for that. We all know about images on smartphones and um, how they should look, how they should look on tablets, where the best way of making them use them is. And yet, a research just published a couple of weeks ago said that 20% of websites have pictures that are not suitable for tablet use. But you could see it. It would take you about 10 minutes to scroll on your tablet to see the picture. If you embed a Twitter moment, you ever use Twitter moments? Have a look on Twitter when you're a profile, click on moments. You can create a pro you can create a whole storyboard using images and Twitter. The only problem is, is it won't necessarily reduce your picture to the size that you want it. So you can have a lovely stream on Twitter and then suddenly have a, a massive picture people can't get past. So always look at what where you're going to display things. Bring it back to WordPress. Choosing your themes for your image resources is really important. A quick checklist. There are obviously a lot more things that um, you could use. And, uh, and I decided I was going to use the uh, British English for optimize, which obviously doesn't like. So there are lots of themes now where you can have a featured image as an auto uh, option. So if you're having a news type theme blog site where you want an image to automatically appear on every post, appear on your home page, so you don't have to actually do it, or your client doesn't have to actually do it. There are things that will let you do that as an automatic. There are also um, plugins that will let you opt where that feature image is to be shown and where it's not. There's some really rubbish um, themes out there um, where they will put a featured image, on the home page, they'll also put it as a big file on your post, on your RSS feed, and nobody can actually get to your content because they can't get past that image. So do check in the, in the details for a theme if images are important to you and you want to use feature posts because it's time consuming changing your themes. I won't, I won't recap everything that's there, it's a pretty, pretty straightforward list. Just making sure it's all clear and easy to use and getting people to understand why you want to, them to use it that way. The, um, just going back to featured images, you know, check how it wants to appear. On this particular theme, you can see that the actual featured image only included the top, top half, which may have been alright for that image, but may make no sense whatsoever. As an automated field, the first time you'd know about it is when you start getting comments that may not be so complimentary. What do you think of when you see that image? Do you see an apple? You see an apple. Yes, For a user who has a visual difficulty, they may see nothing. One of my um, things I do in training about accessibility is getting people to understand, actually, it may be really simple to you, it's an apple. But what will be nice for someone sometimes who's got a screen reader is it's a red apple sat on the table. It may seem really obvious, and you think, well, why do they want to know? 
the, the most frequent alt tag that um, organizations actually put in is a space. So they go to the alt tag because some developers have been clever and they put a mandatory field for alt tags. So they have to put something in and they get around it by pressing the space bar. Really unhelpful. Um, please don't do that. So the, um, but also, if you are copying and pasting text, I deliberately use different fonts when I say screen reader, This is another thing that people tend to do, is that they write all their tags, their picture descriptions in Microsoft Word, and then they just copy directly from Word into WordPress in the alt tag. But of course, that doesn't remove the coding. So what might display, depending how you set up your alt tag, might actually be quite confusing. And Google now uses alt tags too, so actually you can search on alt tags. And um, there is talk that's going to be with naming and shaming. Hopefully not. Hopefully we'll just get this one anyway. Potential image sources. <coughs> who, who, I'm sure you wouldn't think it's in this room, but um, we asked the question at our um, Young Enterprise event. Can you... Do your clients think that they can get a picture from anywhere in the web and use it on their website? Mm -hmm. How many people ever had that problem? Mm -hmm. We're all ready. Do you think they're right? <laughs> no. Do you think you have any liability for that? Yeah. If you're posting it on there, of course you do. If you're the one putting it up, yeah. So when you hand over your website, service level agreements, big, big fan of these things. Um, documentation, really important. Make it clear where the responsibility lies, where your responsibility stops and where it begins. And also be helpful. Don't have to make them fear their lives. Just actually, you can say to them, if you would like some extra advice on this, pitch your added consultancy, pitch your maintenance agreement. I um, did a couple of presentations in Brighton in the last few weeks where developers, one of their biggest problems was that clients were coming back after their maintenance agreements had lapsed and saying, you're responsible, we've done this, but you're responsible. We've just got a bill because we downloaded a picture, it's come in the post, they've tracked our IP address and the interest is being charged daily, but you have to pay it. In some cases, the developer can't get out of it because there was no nothing in writing. There was nothing that said, my responsibility formally finishes at. I am no longer the legal publisher. Now, with GDPR, it's even more important to be very clear in your boundaries and be clear of where and what you're responsible for. And also, to, to be responsible in your own sense, so that if you have used pictures as temporary items, not for publication, and they appear on publication, and they're actually from one well, of the paid for stock agencies, you've actually said to the client, it is your responsibility to change that. There are um, really good um, sites out there where you can use Pixabay, Unsplash, Takes a page, just be careful. There are now links at the top and the bottom of each web page, which are not royalty free pictures. And it is slightly confusing, and some users get caught out. One of the best tips for any of the sites like um, Pixabay and Unsplash is set yourself up a free account. You can then keep track of the pictures that you've downloaded, when you've downloaded them and you can actually do an export to look, working out where they've been used. So if you have a problem three years down the line, you don't have the issue of, where did I get that picture? How do I prove that it was from a free site that actually had permission? I have some clients that I actually say, take screenshots. Take screenshots, date and time them, where you've actually got, where you, it says, there is no cost to this. It is free to use and what the criteria is. But even on these sites, look at their terms and conditions and look at the profile for who has given those pictures. 
It's quite often. They will stipulate, my picture cannot be used in these circumstances. And in those circumstances, you would not necessarily have the right to use that picture. We've covered already about being aware of who may be using the same image. And um, if you have a client that tells you, nobody will ever know, <laughs> either walk away, get yourself an agreement, or be really clear that you are telling them that IP addresses are registered by these websites. We're going into, um, with blockchain, it is going to be a doddle to be able to say, to see where pictures have come from. And there are now two companies operating from Germany um, that are actually making it their job to go and take action against organizations and individuals using blockchain technology and seeing where pictures have been used. No such thing as a free view. I've, um, you know, it's, it is really true. Um, in February this year, um, Google and Getty stock photo images came to an agreement about images and um, that's still being panned out because it, was, it found that people were seeing the image on Google search but they weren't actually clicking through to the product. So that was a bit of a lost revenue. But also, why bother doing all that if no one's going to actually see the image? So look out for developments on that. They'll be coming in the next month or so. Some websites disable the ability to right-click. So if you have an image that's really important, if your CEO is in a picture that you do not want to be used for a comedy issue, or you've got a campaign that's really unpopular, be careful about what pictures you have out there. They're really good material for cartoons and for, for the negative campaigns. Respect others' IP and copyright goes without saying, because I'm sure, talking to the WordPress community, we all understand that. These are the things I probably hear most times. I can save any image I find on the web. No one will know the site doesn't get a lot of traffic. I don't care if it gets three people. If you've got an image and you've ripped off someone's copyright, with the technology that we have now, with AI developing, it will be tracked. And the, the bills don't care whether you are an individual, whether it's someone, just a boy who's put their own little hobby website. The adult of that family will get a bill. How, how many times have you had the experience where your client is sending you pictures to use? Do you always check with them that they're copyright free? Do you have documentation that shows that you can use those pictures? Or do you just happily upload the pictures and not worry about it? That one. <laughs> <laughs> um, my advice, and it's my only advice, be careful, because if you didn't ask and they have breached copyright, IP, GDPR, anything really, you are jointly responsible and you would have to show due diligence, <coughs> can be costly, can be time consuming, what steps you took to make sure that image was safe to be used. Now, that doesn't mean just sending your client a note saying, right, you are now responsible for everything. I've got no responsibility at all, and that's it, you know, job done. You could offer them, I've just done an agreement for a client who, um, we've just drawn up a schedule of services that he's now pitching back to the company who we created the website for three years ago. They haven't paid him a penny since. And he's going to manage that image library for them. It's going to be a nice GDPR compliant library. He's just got a lovely contract that will renew year on year. But actually, he'll do it well. So think about how it actually could affect your business model. But more importantly, check with your insurance, because we've all got insurance these days, and check what it says about where your responsibility begins, where it stops. So if I can manage to get the... Okay. 
So um, while I'm trying to find the, the other um, web page, when, um, when, you think of, when you think of Northern Ireland, can someone just shout out to me the images of Northern Ireland? that would come to their, their, their mind. <laughs> that nice images I'm talking about. Giant's Causeway. Giant's Causeway. Anybody else? Stormont. Stormont. Sorry. Stormont. Stormont, okay. I could bring it down. <laughs> Flags. Images can be so much more than just a photo. So maps make really good images. Um, so much so that the Ordnance Survey, it's a great business model for them. So if you see a map and it's based on the Ordnance Survey, don't just reproduce it without checking because Ordnance Survey material is copyrighted and a lot of maps can't just be reproduced. The um, Northern Ireland is the most beautiful place. I have been just amazed and inspired by how beautiful it is. So when you're producing image galleries for your company, for your own selves, um, start developing galleries that actually look at a different variety of images, but also what is being said about your brand already? So if you sell coats, what else is out there? Tracking images and tracking branding is really important because you can see where the competition is, what's being said. You can change the message, you can change the story. You can also be inspired by what you see and you can start a dialogue and engagement with, um, with a whole new community by, by doing that. Um, What I'm going to, to, to suggest is that we have some really, really cool um, image people in this room. Um, one of them is, is Kaylee here from 34SP, and we've got Mark who is works as a photographer and uh, still takes amazing pictures, and Colin does lots of stuff with images. So I thought it would be really nice if we actually opened up the questions so that they actually also could participate. Just before we do that, let's give our big round. Woo!